Hey everybody, welcome to Fab Fit Friday. I'm just remembering to move my microphone so it's right in front of my face. Um, well, we're going to be working on the sleeve draft today. And you can see I have two sleeves, sleeve one and sleeve two. And I'm not happy with either one of them. So I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to show you some things I tried. And then I'm going to tell you what I think is going on um, with my sleeves. So what we're going to do today is we're going to review measuring the armhole to get the right measurement for the draft. We're also going to look at, you know, the height of our bicep. I want to make sure everybody has that. And I'm going to add one more measurement into the mix that I did not tell you guys about um, a couple weeks ago when we did the sleeve um, draft because I didn't consider it, but I'm considering it now and I'll tell you why. Let me just stop and say hi to Beth. Hey, can't watch full live because I need to run errands. Watch the replay later. Already took my measurements, so started my slow for this weekend. That's so exciting, Beth. Thank you so much. And have fun on your errands. Um, hi, Andrea. Welcome. Um, all right, so this is what happened with my draft. I'm going to stand up as you can see. I have my little sport skirt on because... I have not hiked yet today, so I'm going to do that after I do my FabFit Friday. I wanted to make sure I had enough time to test everything. Um, all right, so this sleeve here, let's look at that. This is my, this is my right sleeve. Okay, now, now look at my left sleeve. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the right and left sleeve because I adjusted them differently after drafting. And I think it's important to um, look at this. So this is the first thing I want to talk about. Oh, you can't hear me, Andrea? Uh, let me see here. Is that better? Let me know if that's better. I have my microphone right here. Let me know if I can, if you can hear me. Um, okay. So when I drafted my sleeve using my body measurements and the armhole measurements, my cap was negative about a half an inch ease, and I'm going to show you that. So I, and that is typical to happen when you do a draft from your own measurements because, you know, you, you fit your bodice, you measure the armhole, then when you do your sleeve, um, things happen, you know, that can be, you know, a little bit variable. I'm just trying to see why my, why my, uh, oh, Amelia says she had to turn her, her, uh, volume all the way up as well. Uh, not sure what's going on. I'm literally talking right into my microphone. Um, all right. Hmm. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Let me know if that's better. Um, all right, so let's start with, I want to show you my drafts before we start drafting so you can kind of see what happens. So let me switch my view here. So let me just show you some things here. I'm going to move me over here. Um, it's still the same. It's not any better. All right. I'm going to, I am so sorry. I'm going to talk really loud and I'm going to. All right. So I'm, if I talk really loud, is that better? I'm practically yelling. So just let me know if that's better. I'm going to talk really loud, and then I'm going to try to figure out um, 
what is going on with my volume here. Wait, hold on one second. Um, all right, let me just try one thing here. Hold on. Let's see, is that better? Tell me if that's better. Those of you who are having trouble hearing me, tell me if it's better. Or, oh, good. All right, and I'm going to focus on the top of the sleeve because once you get past the um, bicep line, it's all a matter of just making it taper to your wrist. So what I want to show you here is I drafted this sleeve using the measurements we took a couple weeks ago and I have no idea where my little oh here it is sorry all right so I used a bicep of 15 and a half so I think my bicep measured 14 and I added an inch for ease so my bicep line is 15 let me use a use something better to write with here. Here, I'll use this. So we have 15 and one half for my bicep line, you know, going there. And my cap was six inches. So I have a six inch cap. Okay. And then I um, drew diagonal lines from here to here and then here to here. Okay, so this, this dashed line right here is the guideline. This is the other one. Okay, so that's the basic framework for drafting your sleeve. So the next step is to um, make guidelines for the curve of the cap. So the first step is you find the middle of the diagonal line, which is right here. Okay, so that's the middle of my diagonal line. And if I draw them on both, let me just blimp them both on there. Okay, that's the halfway point. Then what you're going to do is you're going to um, divide each half and half as well. Oh. Rena is watching from work again. <laughs> I'm so happy you're watching me at work. I did have one one follower who used to chime in to say she always watched me during her lunch hour. I thought that was kind of nice. Um, all right, so I'm going to divide them in half again. So this was my half here and my half here. And then over here, it's here and here. Okay, so you can see now we have one, two, three, four quadrants um, on each side of the sleeve. Okay, so this is how we're going to create the framework for drafting our sleeve. What we're going to do is at these marks, these three marks I drew to divide this line into four sections, I am going to measure down from the diagonal line on the first one and then up the second two. The same thing with the front of the sleeve. Okay, so, and also just so you know, this is the back, this is the front, okay? So on the first one, we are gonna measure down a half an inch and we're gonna draw a guideline like that, okay? And then on the Next one, I'm going to go up 3 sixteenths, which puts me about here. And I'm drawing a, you know, a line that's sort of parallel to my diagonal line. Then I'm going to do, this one here is going to be at 5 eighths. Okay, so we have 1 half, 3 sixteenths, and 5 eighths. And on the front... We are going to do, we're going to go down a little bit farther in the front 
because the front armhole curves in deeper to fit around your bust. So instead of a half an inch, we are going to do five eighths. Okay, then we're going to do three sixteenths, which is the same as the back over here. And then we're going to do three quarters of an inch at the front, which is an eighth of an inch bigger than the back. So this curve is curvier in the front. And if you think about it, um, the, the armhole in the front curves um, more to get around your bust. And in the back, it's really more of a straighter um, shape with a curve to meet the front at, at the base of the armhole. So that's how we're going to draft. So after you have those guidelines marked on your diagonal line, the next step is to um, create your cap curve. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, instead of like wasting a piece of paper and redrawing this, let me just erase all of my curve I have here so I can show you how I um, drew it in. That's why I drew my guidelines in Sharpie marker so you could see, and then I can erase my original sleeve draft here. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like before you draw your lines or your actual cap in. So to start out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, and let's just focus really just on the back right now. Make sure that's really nice and clear so you can see. Make it a little bit lighter. Make sure it's super sharp. Okay, so we're going to start here at the base of the... Um, base of the armhole, and I'm just going to dash myself a curve. This pencil is very sad. Hold on. Let's see if I have. Um, all right, I'm going to use a mechanical pencil instead, hopefully. So I'm going to dash. No, I'm not going to use that. Hold on one second. Let me just sharpen my pencil so it's actually making a mark. I'm sorry, hold on. Sharpening the pencil. All right, here we go. Okay. So what I was saying here, we're going to dash in from here to this horizontal or this first guideline. Then we're going to dash over to this guideline. Then we're going to keep going to this guideline. And then we're going to go to this guide or to the top of the cap like that. After you have a dashed in shape, you can fine tune it with a French curve. So basically I could, you know, have my ruler touching here and having it touching my line here, and I find the curve on the actual ruler that's kind of agreeing with the shape I'm trying to make. I'm going to darken it in. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to do the same thing between this guideline and this guideline. I'm going to try to find a curve that kind of keeps it going and agrees. like that. And then I'm going to curve around the rest of the way. In this last part, I should be able to get in one swipe here. Okay, so you can see now we have this lovely curve. And what it's doing is it's connecting all of these guidelines that we drew. Okay, so you're touching all of those guidelines. And that's what's creating the bell shape. So I'm going to repeat that on the front. So again, just to start out, I'm going to just start here. Dash to the line. Dash to the line. Keep dashing. Dash, dash, dash. One of my favorite sayings is, when in doubt, dash. 
don't draw a hard solid line your first go because you're going to really make good use of your eraser if you do that. So once you've got your dashed line, again, I can use my ruler, French curve here to, you know, get the shape I'm trying to get here. So that would be my armhole or my sleeve cap draft. Let me know if you have any questions about that or if you're having trouble hearing me. I hope you're not because I have my lovely uh, microphone right here. And I think I figured out that my volume come somehow got switched on my camera. So I think I'm okay. Um, but basically now, if I just want to really highlight this for you so you can see the actual shape. Okay, so that is the final shape of the cap. Okay, so the next step, you know, after you've done that is to continue the draft down to the bottom. So in addition to marking the, the um, height of the cap along your full length line, from the center of the cap down to the wrist is the um, full length of your sleeve. And you can see, I just did like a three quarter inch sleeve. See, like it hits me pretty high on my wrist. Um, just to practice with, I can deal with the final length of it later. So, you know, the next step, let me just draw in all the pinks. You can see the full sleeve here now. So I'm just gonna darken in my full length line. And here's my wrist. I decided to make my wrist 10 inches. My wrist end is 10 inches. And then you just connect the wrist to the sleeve cap to finish the draft. So this is what the basic sleeve draft looks like. Okay. And of course, if you want to put your bicep line, you can certainly put that too. All right, so that's my completed draft. The next step, after you draft your sleeve like this, the next step is to check it with the armhole. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. And I am going to use this to check it. If you don't wanna use your actual draft, you can make a copy of your draft and actually you know what I'm gonna make a copy of my draft on super see-through paper and that will allow us to see my armhole underneath so I'm just gonna very quickly trace this and I'm gonna trace it in pencil because I don't want to add any width to my lines because if you use a sharpie marker your the sharpie marker line is almost an eighth of an inch um, so you want to have a skinnier line than that when you're doing drafting so I'm going to use a pencil I have that I'm just gonna draw in my my cap here okay so here is my sleeve draft with no seam allowance 
I also made a copy of my front and back adjusted pattern pieces. If you if you followed along with me um, last week, I was drawing all over my pattern pieces, and I really made them into a huge mess. So what I did to make it easier to see what we're going to do here is I made neat copies of my front and back bodice without seam allowance. So I traced my draft again, or no, I'm sorry, I traced my adjusted pattern with no, you know on the sewing line, not on the um, seam allowance or the raw edge line. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk our, well actually before we do that, let me show you something here. I am going to fold back my shoulders to show you what my armhole shape looks like. And I want to talk about that a little bit because my shape on my personal bodice draft is not um, traditional. And I want to explain why. Okay. All right, so you can see here, all right, so you can see the shape of my armhole this is my front. It curves in to the shoulder seam and then it's kind of straight and it just has a tiny little curve here. Notice my front and back armhole is not a perfect C shape. And the reason for that is, is we did a personal um, basic body, body strap using our own body measurements. So when I measured myself, if you look at me from the side, you can see that from my side seam under my arm, coming around is very wide because I my bust is creating the width to the to the side seam. And then in the back where where it meets the side seam, I'm relatively straight. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't really have any um, flesh around my lips around my rib cage where the armhole curves around to meet the, the front. So that's why my front armhole here is a very short, shallow curve, um, and it's very big here. So what do you think is going to happen with my armhole? I mean, my, um, the measurements of my armholes. Traditionally, if you're proportioned front and back, your front armhole should be shorter than your back armhole. Your back armhole should be longer. Well, because my front armhole has to reach all the way around and get to the side seam, it's actually um, 10 and 5 eighths. My, my back is 10 and a quarter. So my front is actually, if I do a quarter, uh, 3 eighths of an inch bigger than my back. So that's how my armhole came out. So while I'm showing you this, and I'm going to show you the adjustments I'm going to do to my um, sleeve after we test how much ease there is in the cap, just know that your armhole may look different than mine. It may look more symmetrical front to back. You might have something that looks very similar, just a little narrower in the back, you know, depending on your shape. Um, also, your back armhole may be longer than the front. And if it is, that's wonderful and good because if your shape is balanced front to back, the back armhole should be longer. So for my actual personal measurements, it's shorter. So I wanted to show you that. Also, when you're measuring your, your length of your armhole to have as a reference, you can use a curved ruler like this very easily. So I can see... Like if I measure it again, I still get 10 and 5 eighths. And then if I measure this one, I still get 10 and a quarter. Okay, so that's a little bit about the armhole. Notice also my shoulder seams match perfectly. Okay, so that's something else you want to look at on your draft. It, they both stop and start equally. Um, and I think it's helpful to um, walk the cap of your sleeve into your armhole without seam allowances because it's the stitching line that you want to be matching up. So that's another reason why I made a, a fresh copy of my draft without seam allowances. 
So what I'm going to do now is let's start in the back. Okay, so here's my back armhole right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, remember, the back of the sleeve is here, and the front of the sleeve is here. So I am going to use my, some sort of sharp stiletto, you can use a seam ripper, you can use a sharp pencil or a ballpoint pen, something to anchor the pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I am lining up. And I think because I'm using this really light tracing paper, you'll be able to see. I'm lining up the tip of my cap, or the intersection between the cap and the underarm seam with the si side seam and armhole. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the armhole so that the lines are matching. And you can see they match from here to here, and then they start to separate again. Whoops. They start to separate again. So now I'm going to move this closer so you can see. So I'm going to rotate some more. Okay. And somewhere about three inches away from your underarm seam, I want to mark my back notch. So I'm just going to put these notches in. And then if you have not done that to the armhole yet, you're going to trace those through. So that's how you get your notches in the right spot. So keep in mind, oh, there is no shoulder dart. Okay, so let me just back up here. Lean is asking about the shoulder dart. Okay. There is no front shoulder dart. Or did I do a back shoulder dart? Wait a minute. That's a very good question. I don't... Um, all right, let me finish this part, and then I'm going to get my draft back and see what happens. Hold on one second. All right, so... Hmm... That's interesting. All right, let me let me let me check that in a minute. Hold on one second. Um, all right, so I'm going to keep going. And I'm just going to keep walking the pattern so it's the lines are lining up exactly and I'm going to keep walking. until I get to the actual shoulder in the back and I'm going to make a little line where the back shoulder ends. So like right here, that's where the back shoulder ends. Okay. So then I'm going to do the same thing to the front. Oh, you know what I think I did? I think I rotated the shoulder seam right off the end of the, I mean, I think I rotated the shoulder dart right off the, um, the armhole side of my draft to make, that's what I think I did, but I'm going to go back and look. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing in the back. I'm sorry, in the front, I'm going to rotate like this. Okay, and then I'm going to put my notch about three inches. And again, if you don't have a notch on your sleeve yet, transfer it, okay? Then I'm going to keep going. So I'm just rotating it, keeping the lines aligned with each other. And the curvier areas, you're going to make small rotations. On the straighter areas, you can make longer, you know, you can do longer bits at a time. But basically, you're going to see what's happening with the sleeve. 
and I'm happy to report this is what happened to me the first time as well, so I'm getting the same result. I actually have negative ease on this cap. All right, so let's look and see what that means. Okay, so this is the back side of the sleeve here, and my back ends here. This is the front side of my sleeve here, and my front ends here. So if the front overlaps past the back, that means the difference, um, that seems to end up with, I mean, that means negative ease. If my front ended over here somewhere, the difference between the back and the front would be your ease. Does that make sense? So if they overlap, it's negative ease. And if the front ends on the right side of the back notch, that would be actual ease. So let me know if you don't understand or if you have a question about how to determine how much ease your sleeve has. All right. Lean, I'm thinking about it, and when I traced my messy copy of my bodice draft that I marked up last week, my back shoulder seam, um, I just basically rotated the shoulder dart off of the back shoulder to make them even. And I think when I sewed this muslin, there are no darts back there, so I think I cut out this one using the dartless um, pattern. So. That's what happened to my shoulder dart. But I am going to put it back in because next week we're going to do a, you know, fitting for actual style. Or um, once you get the sleeve on, you're going to see there's going to need to be more fitting involved because the sleeve really shows you if you have enough ease across your front and back, like high bust and upper back. So when I do my final testing and fitting, for both the sleeve and the bodice, I will put that dart back in. So that's what happened to my dart, but you get a gold star for noticing that it was missing. Um, all right, so getting back to our sleeve here, we have the um, situation where we don't have enough length in the cap for a non-stretch woven set in sleeve. And the reason why I'm um, uh, clarifying that is because on knit t-shirt patterns, it would be acceptable for your um, cap to be smaller than your armhole, and you actually stretch the cap to fit your armhole. So there are situations where this would be okay. It's not okay for a woven non-stretch set in sleeve, though. Okay, so let me see what Amelia is saying something here. Amelia says, I always seem to end up with too much ease when I walk the sleeve and cap armhole. All right, that could have happened as well. Again, it depends on a few factors. So I picked or I measured and decided that my bicep was six inches away from the tip of my shoulder. So if you remember, we put an elastic around our bicep and then we measured from the tip of the shoulder down to that elastic and I got six inches. I did not put any vertical ease in that measurement so my cap um, was six inches and then my bicep I decided to do the measurement of my bicep I think plus an inch of ease that might not have been enough um, and I'm going to show you why in a minute um, so depending on what you pick for those two measurements that's going to dictate how long your diagonal lines are and ultimately how how big your cap is so like the distance between here and here changes you know obviously if your cap is higher you're going to get a longer area you know and if you make your bicep line longer you're going to get a longer area making a larger cap so that's why it's really important to measure but also know that you know you're going to get what you get but then we can fix it so let me show you some things about fixing it now there's one other measurement that I did not show you guys the week we took the measurements, and this is really awkward to take. Um, so basically what I did was, um, you want to measure from here, so like where the armhole here, and then you wanna go all the way around to the back and measure 
like across the width of this area. So from here around to where the back armhole is. And what I basically did was I started in the back and I just lined up my tape measure so I could see that it was, um, you know, going. So it was, I could see that the tip of my tape measure was near my armhole. And then I just kept walking it around to the front. So if you start in the back and do that, you can measure that area. So that's basically the width of your upper calf. So let me show you. Oh, hi, Kathy, welcome. So that area is gonna be up here above your notches. So I wanna say eh, about halfway up your calf. So if you have a six inch calf, draw yourself a line across there and you're gonna measure that. And you can see this measures eight and a half, okay? My arm from armhole to armhole at that level measured eight. So I currently have a half an inch of ease there, but I will tell you, I think you should have at least one inch of ease across your arm, sort of halfway up your cap. So I can see already that this cap is really not wide enough for me, um, but I wanna show you two ways to add ease. And Amelia, you can do these adjustments in reverse to get rid of ease. So it will work in both directions. So what I tried first, I have two different versions here. Okay, so the first thing you wanna decide is how much ease do you wanna have? So I was at negative one half inch. So I wanted to have, you know, maybe I would say three quarters of an inch tops of ease. All right, so between a half and three quarters is what I like. Some people like more ease, you know, whatever it is you like, that's what I think you, you know, try. But basically um, what I did was I slashed my pattern right here i'm going to just draw a pink line right above the notches and i slashed and spread it a quarter all the way across that's giving me the half an inch that i was at negative ease so now this cap is equal to the armhole but remember we want to have some ease so I did a second slash and I did it a little bit higher. I did it up here. And I decided to give myself a little bit more in the back. So I added a quarter there and I added an eighth there. So basically I added another three eighths of an inch for ease. And I thought I would just try that. So that isn't even my half inch I needed, but basically that's what I did. And if you look here, that's this sleeve. So if you look at this sleeve, I added to the height of the cap. I did not add to the width of the cap. And that's the fit I got. Okay, and I'm this fit is not fabulous. I think part of my issue here is when I raise my arms, my whole thing goes up with me. Look where my armhole is when I raise my arm, it's dragging onto my arm. So I think my armhole needs to be a little bit bigger, which is also gonna add more to the wing section of the pattern. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that next week, but I do wanna make a nice fitting sleeve, um, you know, and this is not nice. And I think part of it is the depth of my armhole needs to be a little bit lower. Um, so that's the one thing. So that was the first way I tried. And then after I measured up here to check my width and I realized my cap was not really wide enough for me, I did it this way. So in this situation, I cut my sleeve in half and I spread the whole thing seven eighths. So that's gonna give me basically the same extra three eighths of ease but it's also adding seven eighths to my measurement 
across here. So you can see now it's nine and a quarter or around nine, depending on where I measure it. Oh, well, let me find out exactly, hold on. So halfway is right here. So if I measure that, yeah, we get nine and a quarter. So I have more width on my cap. So instead of adding height, I added width. And that sleeve is this one. Okay, and I think this feels more comfortable and I think it looks a little better. I showed them to my daughter, Anna, and she thought they both looked equally yucky. So um, an untrained eye could not see. She's giving me a funny face now. <laughs> I asked her. I think her. they look the same, yeah, not right. yucky. Oh, well, I think they look yucky and the same. Thank you, Anna. Though they are yucky, but she couldn't tell the difference is my point of telling you that. So they're still similarly not fabulous. Um, so what I'm going to do during the week is I'm going to lower my armhole, you know, add a little bit to the wings of my sleeves, and I'll show you that next week. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit more ease in the upper chest and upper back, because when I do this, it's really snug, you know, so I want to give myself a little bit more ease in my back. I mean, maybe not in my maybe not in my front, but in my back definitely needs it. So next week is gonna be the conclusion of the Basic Bodice Draft Along. Um, I'm gonna show you how to um, take the pieces you have and you know fine tune them. We'll do some sleeve fitting things, we'll do some wearable ease fitting things, and then I can put this back on and show you how it looks, and then I can show you how my final muslin looks um, I have to tell you honestly, I wanted to spend more time on this and get the sleeve perfect before I came on today, but I am having, I cannot tear myself away from working on the top down center out method of pants fitting. I am having so much fun playing with that method. Um, I've tried two different patterns that were not my own and um, I got good results with those, and then I tried my Happy Pants pattern, and I got good results with the, that one as well. But what this method is teaching me is, what it's teaching me is sometimes, instead of you know, digging down or scooping to make the leg smooth, if you just lower the whole waist, front or back, that does the same thing. And then what's happening is working with one um, single leg twelve allows you to really see what's going on because you can see through the crotch, you can see through the inseam, um, you can see how the leg is hanging better than if you have a full pair of pants on. So I wanna say that my pants fitting skills have um, improved 500% already because not only can I see what it's doing when it's right, but I can also play with the rise front and back and create wrinkles. So now when I see wrinkles on pants, I can have a better perspective of, you know, what's happening in the pants to create the wrinkles. So this is a lot of fun for me and I'm going to actually be teaching it in October. So stay tuned for that. But, um, yeah, so part of me wanted to really switch gears and start working on this sooner than I did, so I apologize that I don't have a perfect sleeve today. But basically, you guys need to draft a sleeve first, so fine-tune the fit of your front and back. The important thing is to make sure your armhole is sitting on the tip of your shoulder, um, you know, and then then you can measure and then you can walk your sleeve cap draft into the, um, you know, into your armhole to check it. Once everybody has a lot, has their sleeve and their bodice sewn together, you're going to know what's working and what's not working because you'll be able to see it, and then we can address those things next week. So next week will really be a fitting um, tutorial. And seriously, you guys, if you have, if you're following along with this bodice draft and you have specific questions, um, if you want to send me, email me photos to jsterndesigns37 at gmail.com, your front and back, and you have questions, 
send me your photos, send me your questions, and I will answer those questions live next Friday. So that might give you some motivation to, you know, do your muslin. <laughs> I don't know how many people, I know some people are following along because I have gotten some fitting questions either via email or in my J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider group. But if you are working on this and you're ending up with things happening that are not the way you think they should be happening, send me clear pictures with your questions and I will, and also let me know if I can share those during the live stream, your photos, um, and then people can see what I'm talking about. But that way we can um, address more fitting than just what I'm experiencing. So right now for me, my fitting things are going to be making my back, upper back, a little bit more ease, lowering my armhole, and then fixing my sleeve so it's it hangs a little bit better. Um, you know, it's just not perfect the way I want it to be right now. So that's, um, that's my plan for the conclusion of the bodice draft along. I don't know if you can see, I'm changing colors. I'm looking at my monitor. If I'm over here, I have a green tint to my face. And then if I switch over here, it turns pink and rosy. <laughs> I don't know why that's happening, but I'm watching myself bob back and forth in, in the monitor. And I feel like I'm changing colors depending on where my head is. Um, Amelia says, I'm excited for next week because I've already got my bodice and sleeve done, but my sleeve doesn't fit right. All right, so send me clear photos front, back, and side with you wearing it. And then also, if you put your pattern pieces on the floor and take a clear top-down picture, send those as well so I can see what they are. And then I can, you know, make suggestions um, to fit those next week. So I know Amelia is going to be asking questions. I, you know, I will sit here all day with you guys next Friday and work on this with you if you want. So, um, you know, make sure you let me know what's going on before Friday though, so I can think about it. Um, but anyway, so that's my, um, you know, that's my tutorial for today. If anybody has any questions about the sleeve draft, you know, either post them here or you can mess email me or you can join my Facebook group and you can post pictures in there. One thing I will say is if you're posting pictures of you wearing a muslin and you just post the picture, um, it's helpful to see the picture, but if you can also give me a little commentary on what your thing is, like, oh, this fits great didn't I do a good job? Oh, I feel like this is too tight. Oh, how do I fix this wrinkle? You know, so kind of tell me what it is in the picture that's bugging you so I can, you know, focus on that and then, you know, offer advice for it. Okay, so Lean is asking about the difference for ease between a sleeveless and a block with a sleeve. All right, so it's really, I think the ease in a sleeveless block versus a one without a sleeve is you can get away with being a lot snugger if you don't put the sleeves on. Because before I put these sleeves on this bodice, it felt much more comfortable. Now it feels tighter because you know the shoulders and the armholes are locked in and my shoulders are keeping the fabric from being able to shift back and forth and just feel loose and free. The minute you put a sleeve on, it landlocks it, your front and back, and it makes it feel snugger. So I think you need more ease to accommodate that in a bodice. The other thing about a sleeveless block is your armhole can be anywhere. Like you can cut it up and have it reach up to the middle of your shoulder and then have it come down. You can have it hang down much lower, you know, on the side. You don't have to worry about it being close to your underarm. It can be down here or anywhere between where your bra band is and, you know, the skin you have between the top of your bra and your armhole, I mean your armpit. So, you know, making a sleeveless block doesn't require you to be so particular about where your armhole is. Your armhole can be anywhere and it can be any style. I mean, think about like halter style, um, 
you know, you could make it asymmetrical. You could make it come in here and then go back out so more skin shows here. Um, typically when I do my, like when I did my tank top, that's like my, my all purpose tank top. Um, I actually like to have the armhole come in similar to one with a sleeve cause it, it hides all of the, you know, the little fatty things I have right here. I mean, I don't know if you guys have them, but I have like little fatty things on the side of my arm. So when I make my dressier version of my tank top, it's wider and the armhole is very similar to a set in sleeve armhole. So it really depends on the style, but typically you can get away with less ease in your front and back bodice if you're not putting a sleeve on. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Joey Goody says, yes, better. So I'm assuming he's talking about the volume um, or whatever, but whatever is yes, better. I'm very happy that it's better. Um, so anyway, that's my report for today. Um, please feel free to email me questions and pictures. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Labor Day. It's Labor Day weekend. Of course, that doesn't mean anything for me because I'm actually meeting with one of my new pants fitting students from Australia. So I'm going to get up really early in the morning on Monday and meet with her. I'm super excited um, because of the time difference. But um, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday weekend. And I'm going to be um, using that extra day to get a lot of stuff done, I think. But um, definitely have a lovely weekend. And I will see you next week for our fitting tutorial for the bat bodice draft along. Um, oh, all right, Regina says, I'm still having trouble hearing and my volume is up high. Can you hear me better when I'm right in front of my, my microphone? I'm really, I'm at a little bit of a loss as to why some people say they can hear and some people can't because I'm using like my husband's pro equipment this is a Rode microphone that he uses for professional equipment. And then my camera is professional, so I don't understand. Um, so I really apologize if you can't hear me. I'm doing my best to talk loud and keep my face in front of this microphone. Um, Lean says, have a nice weekend all till next week. Thanks. Have a nice weekend, Lean. All right, so that's going to be my report. And I hope you can hear me. I'm sorry if you can't. Um, but I will, I will keep striving to talk loud and clear and slow so everybody can at least hear me to some extent. But anyway, all right. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.